Hello and welcome back to our channel at NBO underscore Ben. In the vast frozen wilderness of the Arctic, where ice and snow reign supreme, a resilient people have thrived for centuries, the Inuit. Welcome, dear viewers, to a remarkable journey through the cultural richness of the Inuit people. A journey that will unravel the secrets of their survival, their artistry, and their profound connection to the natural world. Join me as we delve into this captivating exploration of the Inuit way of life. Our journey begins with the harsh environment that has shaped the Inuit way of life. Endless stretches of ice and snow, freezing temperatures, and treacherous waters that make this a challenging place to survive. But the Inuit have adapted brilliantly, mastering the art of hunting and living in harmony with the spirits that govern their world. The history of the Inuit is fascinating and spans thousands of years. The Inuit are believed to be descendants of the Thule culture, which originated in Alaska around 1000 CE. The Thule people were skilled hunters and navigators, using kayaks and dog sleds to traverse the Arctic regions. Over time, they migrated eastward, reaching Greenland around the same period. The Inuit were highly adaptive to their harsh Arctic environment. They relied on hunting marine mammals like seals, whales, and walrus, as well as fishing and gathering edible plants. Inuit society was organized in small nomadic groups, and they lived in temporary winter houses made of snow and ice, known as igloos, and summer tents made of animal skins. With the arrival of European explorers in the 17th and 18th centuries, the Inuit encountered outsiders and engaged in trade with them. European contact, however, also brought diseases and disruptions to their way of life. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, colonial powers, including Denmark and Greenland and Canada in the Arctic regions, began exerting control over Inuit territories. This led to significant changes in their traditional lifestyles, as they were introduced to Western practices and faced forced assimilation efforts, such as residential schools. In Canada, the Inuit are recognized as one of the distinct indigenous groups. The Constitution Act of 1982 acknowledges their unique cultural identity and grants them certain rights and protections under sections 25 and 35. Greenlandic Inuit, despite being part of the Kingdom of Denmark, have their own autonomous government and have made efforts to preserve their language and culture. The Inuit hunted sea animals from Kajaks, which were single passenger seal skin covered boats. Kajaks were highly buoyant and could be easily righted by a seated person, even if overturned. This design was so efficient that Europeans and Americans adopted it and still produce similar boats under the name Kayak. Inuit also used larger open boats called Umiaks, made of wood frames covered with animal skins, for transporting people, goods, and dogs. In the winter, they hunted sea mammals by watching breathing holes in the ice and patiently waiting for seals to come up for air. During the winter, both on land and sea ice, the Inuit relied on dog sleds, also referred to as Kamutik, for transportation. The husky dog breed, such as the Siberian Husky and the Alaskan Malamute, originated from the Inuit's use of wolves for transportation. Inuit clothing and footwear were made from animal skins, sewn together using needles made from animal bones and threads made from other animal products. They also made art from ivory, bone, and stone crafting small sculptures of animals and human figures. Inuit families lived in temporary shelters made from snow called igloos during the winter and tents made of animal skins during the warmer months. They were nomadic, moving to different places depending on the season and availability of resources. Inuit society had a division of labor based on gender, but it was not absolute. Men were traditionally hunters and fishermen, while women took care of the household tasks. Marriages were often arranged, and the structure of households varied from nuclear families to larger formations of multiple families. Inuit culture had its share of conflicts and raids among different groups, and they had their system of justice, often moderated by elders. Suicide and infanticide were known, but they were not common practices as some historical accounts suggested. Elders were highly respected in Inuit society, as they were keepers of communal knowledge, Inuit Kaujimaja Tukangit, also known as Inuit Traditional Laws, is a system of governance and principles that guide the Inuit society. It is different from Western legal concepts, 
and was thought to be non-existent by early Western observers before the introduction of the Canadian legal system. However, there were customary laws and a set way of doing things that had to be followed in Inuit society. Inuit Kaujamajatukangit consists of three main elements. Maligate refers to what has to be followed. These are the laws and rules that guide the behavior and interactions of individuals within the community. Pikjate refers to what has to be done. These are the customs and practices that must be observed in various situations and activities. Tirigasusiet refers to what has to be avoided. These are the prohibitions and taboos that must be respected to avoid negative consequences for the individual or the community. If someone's actions went against the principles of Tirigasusiet, Maligait, or Pikjait, the Angakuk, shaman, might intervene to address the situation and prevent any harmful consequences. It is essential to understand that Inuit Kaujimaja Tukangit is not a written legal code, but is deeply rooted in the cultural traditions and knowledge of the Inuit people. It reflects their deep understanding of their environment, the importance of community, and the need to live in harmony with nature and each other. Inuit Kaujimaja Tukangit continues to be a significant aspect of Inuit culture, and its principles are passed down through oral tradition and lived experiences rather than through written documentation. It guides their decision-making, relationships, and governance within their communities. The environment in which the Inuit lived inspired a rich mythology filled with adventure tales of hunting whales and walruses. The long winter months, spent waiting for caribou herds or hunting seals near breathing holes, gave rise to stories of mysterious and sudden appearances of ghosts and fantastic creatures. Some Inuit believed that the Aurora Borealis, or Northern Lights, held images of their family and friends dancing in the afterlife, while others considered the lights to be more sinister, believing that they could be dangerous if whistled at. Inuit mythology was rooted in animist principles, a belief system where all things, including humans, possess spirits that could be influenced by supernatural entities. They practiced a form of shamanism, with the Angakuk, shaman, playing a crucial role in the community. Angakuit were healers and psychotherapists who tended to wounds, offered advice, and invoked spirits to assist people in their lives. They were believed to have a natural ability for this role and were recognized as such by the community. Inuit religion was intertwined with daily rituals that were seen as necessary for their survival. They believed that animals and other elements of nature also had souls like humans, and thus they approached hunting with great respect and customary supplication to avoid offending the spirits. It was believed that failing to show proper respect during a hunt could lead to the spirits seeking vengeance. Life in the Arctic was harsh and unpredictable, and the Inuit lived with a constant awareness of the uncontrollable forces that could affect their existence. To ensure their survival, they believed they had to work in harmony with the supernatural powers, respecting and appeasing the spirits to provide for their day-to-day -day needs. The saying, the great peril of our existence lies in the fact that our diet consists entirely of souls, reflected their understanding of the interconnectedness between their lives and the spirits in their environment. Inuit art, carved with exquisite precision, reflects their reverence for the spirits that surround them. Ivory and bone sculptures depict scenes of hunting and the spirits that watch over them, preserving the essence of their cultural heritage. As the tundra blooms in the brief Arctic summer, the Inuit's connection with the land transforms. Gathering in groups, they celebrate the bounty of the land and sea, a reminder of their interdependence with the environment. Their traditional drumming and dancing echo across the vast landscapes, a testament to their resilience and spirit. But this ancient way of life faces challenges in the modern world. Climate change threatens their environment, altering the migratory patterns of animals they have relied upon for generations. As the ice melts and the seas warm, the Inuit must adapt and find new ways to preserve their traditional knowledge and culture. Yet, amidst the challenges, the Inuit's deep-rooted respect for nature endures. They continue to pass down their wisdom from one generation to the next, ensuring that their customs, rituals and beliefs remain etched in the fabric of time. In this remote corner of the world, the Inuit story is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. Their harmonious coexistence with the spirits of the land reminds us of the delicate balance that sustains life on Earth. 
So let us take heed of the Inuit's profound connection to nature, their reverence for the spirits that shape their world, and their timeless wisdom. For in understanding their way of life, we gain insights into the delicate dance between humanity and the environment, a dance that will shape the fate of generations to come. As the Arctic wind whispers through the glaciers and the aurora borealis dances in the night sky, the Inuit's enduring tale continues to echo across the frozen tundra. Their story is a reminder of the intricate tapestry of life, where humans and nature are but threads woven together in the grand symphony of existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah.